Hello everyone. I hope you guys had a healthy spring break. And uh, so, as mentioned in the announcement, everything is online, and uh, all the videos and uh, the data for your experiments will be provided through NYU classes. So, uh, and for your as for your reports, please don't forget to mention your net ID and uh, group numbers on the reports and uh, don't forget to write your uh, write the page numbers in the table of contents so so please don't forget those and uh, as for the report format send them in pdf don't send them in word document and for the as for the class we'll be discussing uh, today we'll be discussing about uh, temperature measure uh, sensors so we use temperature sensors to provide data uh, temperature data directly to the system uh, computers uh, so uh, for example the ac refrigerators and even your computers have uh, uh, the temperature sensors built in to detect uh, their temperature uh, so for this lecture we'll be seeing at three sensors the first one is rtd which is a uh, resistance temperature detector and uh, as uh, the name suggests the it detects temperature using resistance uh, it's so rtds are basically metals and uh, we, as we know resistance of most metals uh, increase with increase in temperature so this, as in temperature increases the resistance increases and uh, if we use this behavior we can derive the formula to be uh, well, to be this so and uh, since alpha 1 alpha 2 so alpha 2 and so on are really small we can approximate it to r naught into 1 plus half alpha 1 into t minus t naught and uh, so if you plot this it would look something like this so if you plot the temperature versus resistance so as temperature increases the resistance increases and your slope would be r naught alpha 1 and uh, alpha, where alpha 1 is your positive coefficient t naught is your difference temperature and r naught is your temp uh, resistance at your difference temperature so along with this we'll also be looking at uh, the behavior of rtd when a sudden change in temperature is given so like for example when you change the temperature suddenly from 0 to 100 degrees c how would it behave uh, so this is also called giving a step input so and uh, so this is how it would look like and you will see this in the lab experiment too and uh, so the tau is your time constant and with uh, this is nothing but 63.2 percent uh, uh time taken to reach the 62 3.2 percent of your vss which is your voltage at steady state so uh, the time taken to reach uh, this this 0.632 into VSS is your uh, time constant and uh, using that you can we can figure out uh, we can look at the behavior of RTD so uh, the second one is the mister the mister is uh, it's similar to RTD uh, because we use resistance to detect the temperature but instead of using a metal we use a semiconductor because uh, so the difference between rtd and thermistor is that uh, the thermistor is less sensitive to the temperature changes whereas thermistor uh, sorry rtd is less sensitive to temperature changes and uh, thermistor is uh, more sensitive than rtd because uh, it's a semiconductor uh, 
and it's highly uh, so it has a very large negative coefficient and uh, high it's highly nonlinear uh, what I mean by less sensitive to temperature changes is that as temperature increases so if you for example if you take uh, resistance at 0 degree C and resistance at 100 degree C the difference in resistance would be really small for uh, RTD when compared to the thermistor so for thermistor uh, the uh, the character the characteristic equation would look like looks like this and uh, your when you plot it it would look like this since it has a very large negative coefficient the temperature as temperature increases the resistance decreases uh, and uh, we would also look at the behavior for step input just as we looked at it, looked at it for rtd so when we go for the, when we look at the connections so this is the uh, this is the circuit for uh, rtd both rtd and thermistor so since art so since they are just resistors you can directly connect it in a circuit uh, in pa in uh, series with some other resistor which is of the same order and uh, if you build so bas basically what you are doing is uh, you are building a voltage divider circuit and you are looking at the voltage drop across the rtd and thermistor so that you know uh, as temperature changes how much uh, voltage drop does it have based on that you can figure out how much resistance it has and based on that you can figure out which uh, what temperature it is at so for the uh, for the experiment you will see uh, so we have a beaker which has water in it and uh, we'll be heating it using a heater uh, so it, it will have the thermo uh, thermometer uh, for ground truth to know exactly what uh, so uh, to see what the temperature is exactly at that moment and uh, the other one is your RTD or, thermist, uh, or thermistor which is connected in the circuit and this uh, so the voltage across the RTD or thermistor is uh, seen by connecting it to the DAC board and uh, yeah so using that we can look at the voltage at different temperatures so we'll be looking at temperatures from uh, from the room temperature of uh, the sensor to uh, when from the room temperature of water uh, to 80 degree uh, until it reaches 80 degrees so uh, if the water temperature is 20 st starts at 20 we'll look at 20 30 40 50 60 70 and 80 degrees c so yeah that's uh, so using that we can uh, figure out the behavior of rtd and thermistor so once uh, once we get all those values you know that uh, T naught, you know the T, you know the R naught, and uh, using those, you can figure out the beta. And similarly for RTD, you know the T naught, you know the R naught, you know the T, you know the RT. You can figure out alpha one, and using those, you can uh, you know exactly the slope and uh, the equations for uh, so the models for your RTD and thermistor so once you have all those you can directly plug in the resistance and uh, you can find the temperature so that's how they find the temperature using these materials yeah these sensors so uh, the third one is your thermocouple thermocouple works on the principle of uh, Seebeck effect uh, so Seebeck effect is nothing but if you have two metals uh, connected uh, in, a in a circuit and if one is heated and one is uh, 
uh, in a if one is really cold in a cold place uh, the the voltage is generated between uh, in the circuit so if you look so this is a circuit we'll be using for the lab and uh, so as you can see we'll the two materials we'll be using are constantin and uh, copper so co is your is constantin and cp is copper so these two are, are uh, so one of them is in the water container and another one is in the ice container so the ice container stays the same it doesn't change the water the water in the water container uh, will be heated so uh, so when you look at it in the experiment as the temperature difference between water between the water and ice increases the voltage generated in the uh, in the circuit increases so you can look at the voltage in the voltmeter and uh, uh, yeah so and the voltage uh, isn't really huge it's a really small voltage it's in millivolts so yeah, it's not a generator or anything. It's just uh, it's uh, it's just a sensor. Okay, so so what's the different? Uh, so what's important in thermocouple? So you, thermocouple works on CPEC effect, and it does not require any external power source. Uh, so the uh, the characteristic equation of your uh, of, of the thermocouple is V. Yeah, so alpha 2 and alpha 3 and everything is really small so you can ignore it uh, then your voltage is direct is almost equal to alpha 1 into t minus t naught which is nothing but the difference in temperature so the voltage is directly uh, so voltage is proportional to the change in temperature and alpha 1 is your co uh, coefficient uh, and if you plot that out it would look like if something like this it would be a linear line uh, going through the origin and your slope would be alpha 1 uh, yeah so it would look something like this so uh, you do the same thing as you did for the previous two experiments you will uh, we will take readings for different temperatures so what we'll do is uh, if if we have a temperature of the room te if the room temperature for example is 20 degrees c we'll take temperatures at 30 degrees c 40 degrees c 50 degrees c 60 degrees c 70 degrees c and 80 degrees c so the voltage at all these temperatures would be recorded and using this voltage we can figure out the resistance so using this voltage you can we can directly get the alpha 1 for the thermocouple but for thermistor and rtd We need, we need to find out the find the resistance and once you find the resistance you can plug it in these equations and you can get the alpha 1 and beta uh, coefficients right so yeah that's all for the lecture uh, please look at uh, the manual and and go through everything before uh, going to the experiment part because you need to know exactly what you are doing and yeah so that's all uh thank you uh stay home and stay safe see you guys bye